How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create some realistic lighting. We're not using any HDRIs. We're gonna making some really nice natural looking shadows. And um, I'm previewing this here in Cycles X so you can kind of see how these are moving and you can have endless variety here. It's super custom and it's not an HDRI. As you can see, we're just doing this right here. If you want to grab this file, it's available currently on Patreon. If you haven't heard of the Patreon, I have free tutorials, free materials, and a bunch of other really cool tools on there if you'd like to check that out. So I'm going to go ahead and get a new file. Now I'm using Blender 3.0, but this works in any of the latest versions. I'm only using Blender 3.0 so that we can utilize that really fast render engine. It really helps us preview that lighting really well. All right, so let's go ahead and just set up a scene here. I'm gonna do it pretty simple. Um, it's not gonna be as elaborate as the uh, scene you just saw. So I'm gonna get another object so we can kind of preview how these uh, shadows interact with what we're working with. So I'm gonna get the Suzanne monkey here and just place him down like that. All right, so here we go. What we need to do first is get our spotlight. So the spotlight is what's really gonna help us replicate what a sun looks like. So we're gonna get here and get your spotlight to be whatever angle you want the sun to be at whatever particular time of day. Now, one of the reasons you would wanna do a setup like this is because HDRIs can sometimes add um, a lot of uh, weight to your scene sometimes, sometimes not, but having full customizability, which is something an HDRI does not allow, is really useful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create this and then we're gonna go here into cycles. All right, so right now this only works in cycles. So let's get this to power to be like 20,000. With these area lights, I mean, the spotlights, you, for some reason, need to make them really powerful depending on their settings. With what I like, I have to make it really high. So here we go. That's our spotlight doing some fun things. Now, what I like to do to get the spotlight to be the kind of the color of the sky, I go to my world, and on color, I go to uh, sky texture. And then I'll just go ahead, and in my area light, I'll click on the eyedropper and just kind of select something like that. Let's see, we get a little bit more warmth in our color like this. So now we have a more accurate color. It's very subtle, but, but it does make a difference because the human eye can kind of detect when things are kind of fake. So we have a little bit better of a light. Now, let's go ahead and get those shadows, which is what this tutorial is all about. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Shift D on this plane. I'm gonna hit Control A. Actually, no, there was no scale applied. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it like this and then get it pretty close to my spotlight. And just for the fun of it, and now I'm gonna get the shadow just to cover up part of my object. So there we go. Let's go ahead and create a material that creates our shadows. So what's great about this is because we're making it procedurally, it's totally customizable. You can use an image um, but we're gonna be using textures that come with Blender. So what we need to do is move over this principle, shift A, search, mix shader. And then we're gonna get a transparent BSDF and plug that there. And you'll know it's working if you can start to see through the plane now. Now let's go ahead and get a color ramp so we can put a texture behind it, which is gonna be R noise texture. Now with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, we're gonna hit Control T. The Node Wrangler comes default with Blender, just go ahead and enable it. And we're gonna use the object coordinate, plug the factor into the color ramp, plug the color into the factor, and from linear to constant. And then that's gonna give us some shadows. As you can see, it's starting to look, you know, like the sun is going through some trees or something like that. I like to go ahead and squish my texture a little bit and then bring it up like that. I do like how it's kind of elongated in that sense. And then we can go ahead and maybe bring this over some more to cover up our model. So that is how you create these really, really nice shadows that you see in a lot of um, renders. And how do we animate it? We're gonna animate it on two um, different things. So here in the shader window, I'm gonna go up and add a new window to get the timeline because we are gonna animate it. We need to go here from 3D to 4D, and that's gonna allow us to have a randomness seed. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna right click, insert keyframe, and then go to the end of my timeline. It doesn't really matter how many frames you have, it's all dependent on your scene. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and animate it very slightly. 
We don't want it to be extremely quick because that's not natural unless you're in like a windstorm or something. Again, totally dependent on your scene. And then here on the location, I'm gonna go ahead and animate that. So at the beginning of my scene, insert keyframe, go to the end, insert keyframe again. And again, this is endless. You can make this as long as you want. And there we go. We now have realistic lighting that we have. And this is my original render you're seeing now. So you can have some fun and create some realistic natural lighting. Now let's go ahead and zoom in so we don't see the sky because I'm gonna show you that we can actually go ahead and give the illusion that there is a sky in the scene. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna click on the spotlight, click here, go to the hex, and I'm gonna go ahead and control C, copy the hex code, go back to the world, and we're gonna paste in that hex code. And then bring your brightness down to zero, and then just kind of slightly bring it up till you get that filled in. In fact, we can make it a little bit blue to emulate the sky, just like this. Now it looks more natural and smooth, and we can kind of see. If you want your shadows to be more of a solid look instead of soft, go back to the uh, spotlight and go play with the radius of your light. So you can make them as soft as you want or as hard as you want. So you can kind of have control over that as well. So you get tons of control, having some fun and doing your best to try to emulate the sun and making it look natural. And that is how that is done. The more work you put in, the more realistic it's gonna look. It doesn't look totally realistic now. So you're gonna to wanna to play around with your color and look at some references. With that being said, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. How's it going guys? So I've been making procedural materials for almost four years now and I know how hard it is to learn them. Especially here on YouTube, you can just watch random videos and it's hard to really get those concepts to click when you're watching just one-off videos and not really ones in a good succession of, you know, learning from here to here. That is one of the reasons why I made this course that I'm releasing today. I've gotten tons of requests for this and I finally have it here for you guys. Now, this course I designed to actually be fun and interesting to watch. It's not just gonna be hours of just, this is what this note does. If you plug it in here, it's gonna do this. We're actually gonna be learning by making materials we're gonna use in real life. And by making those materials, we're gonna learn really good usable concepts at the same time. For example, we're gonna make a really cool stucco material. And at the same time of making that material, we're learn how to make scrapes and make really realistic color combinations and color effects. This course is all about just getting you comfortable with shading. It's made for beginners and intermediate users. The goal is to get you through this, just the massive cloud of understanding of what is going on with procedural materials and the nodes inside them. I completely understand watching YouTube video after YouTube video and those concepts just not clicking. This course is gonna help those concepts click. And through these eight lessons, you are gonna finally have an understanding of what is going on with procedural materials and be able to make endless variety in those materials. Here's a breakdown of each lesson. Now, lesson one is gonna be breaking down my mindset. When I'm actually approaching materials, what am I thinking of? What is the goal here? I'll also be showing you how I get my reference material and what I'm looking at when I'm actually making these materials. We'll be going over all the default textures that Blender has to offer and how we can mix those together and do some really cool stuff with it. Lesson number two is all about technique. I'm gonna be showing you two of my favorite techniques on how to combine and mix the default patterns with Blender to give you really cool patterns. Um, this is kind of the last boring one. We only have two kind of boring lessons and after that, it's just gonna be having fun making materials. Lesson three is the surface imperfection lesson. This one has a lot of concepts packed into it and that's kind of why I picked it to do that. I'll be showing you how to take patterns, distort them, make them look more organic, make them look realistic. We'll be making scratches, we'll be making scrapes and fingerprints in this lesson. Lesson four is a really quick one. It's kind of a breather from the craziness that was the past lessons, just to show you how to make really cool car paints, how to get some cool color variation, and just make some stuff you see on cars nowadays. All right, lesson five is all about organic materials. We're gonna be making a really nice, realistic leather material. And at the same time, I'm gonna show you how to stack textures and color to make realistic looks and how to hack textures to recreate things you see all around you. In lesson number six, we're gonna be making stucco and asphalt. And in that, I'm gonna show you how to get this really natural looking scale variation 
rather than just having one scale, you can combine them, have a lot of fun with that. I'll also be showing you how to optimize your nodes so you're not using too many nodes at one time. All right, lesson seven is all about sci-fi materials. I'm gonna show you what Blender has to offer to give you that sci-fi aesthetic and then we're gonna be combining a ton of them to create a really, really cool material. This one's really fun. It's a lot of a recap and then some really cool new things that I'm introducing in this specific lesson to help you add detail to plain and boring textures. So lesson number eight is about weathered materials. In this lesson, we're gonna be taking everything we've learned and seeing how far we can push them. So this is gonna be a pretty hefty detailed material, but by the end, you're gonna have a crazy material, a really nice weathered, so we're gonna be talking about weathered concepts and different things like that. So there you go. That is the Getting Comfortable with Shading course. It is available on Blender Market and Gumroad right now. Hit the link in the description if you want to check it out. And thank you for watching.